Well, he is risen, he is risen indeed. So good to be with you this morning. So glad that you would get up early and come out and join us for this wonderful Easter sunrise service. I uh, hope you're outside sitting on your front porch, uh, looking at the sun as it's getting ready to rise, coming up from the east. And uh, I was thinking this morning as I was driving into the church, just uh, they were talking on the radio about the time frames of everything that would have taken place whether it was on Friday or on Sunday. And so uh, it was just, just thinking about that as I, as I drove in and the excitement of the resurrection was just brewing up inside of me. And so I'm so glad that you would join us and be with us today. Uh, it's a very special day to be together. It's a great day in the life of the believer. Obviously, this is the time that, that we celebrate everything that, that makes what we believe in true, what makes everything that we believe in real. Today is an exciting day. It's a little bit different. We're not gathered uh, together as a large group outside here on the front lawn of the church like we normally do. Uh, I suppose we could have invited everyone to drive down in their cars and we could have tried to amplify the sound, but instead we've chosen to continue to to work on uh, being kind of quarantined and isolated to continue to try to provide a safe and healthy environment for our community and those around us, praying that uh, you're feeling healthy, you're feeling safe. Um, and we this morning, we just, uh, we just want to, to, to pray as we get into God's Word this morning, as we take time to have just a, a little bit of, of exploring what that moment must have been like on that first Resurrection Sunday morning. So what I'd like to do before we get in is just take a moment, gather our thoughts, pull our hearts and minds together. And let's take a moment and pray and seek the Lord. So if you would join me as we pray. Father in heaven, we are so delighted to be able to be in your presence. We're so thankful that you would uh, invite us to be with you. God, we're thankful for what today represents, Resurrection Sunday. The day that, that you did the very thing that you promised to do, which was rise again. Father, we thank you that through that, Lord, we find hope in our lives today, Father, through that act of love that we've been celebrating this past week. Father, we pray now that as we gather this morning, Lord, that you would speak into our hearts and our minds and that you would, uh, God, allow this day to be a day that would, uh, it would impact us in new ways. Lord, we pray for those who are sick, who are still battling things. My friend who is in the hospital battling the virus, we just lift him up and ask for uh, your blessing, Father, in his physical body. Father, we pray for my mom and her health journey and ask that you would touch her physical body. Pray for the whole family uh, during these trying times. Father, we continue to pray for our church and ask that you would be with us, that you would bless us as we gather. God, we love you and we praise you. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Well, it is exciting to be with you this morning. Today, we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. Our, our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, and it's an exciting time. Last week was Palm Sunday, and, and we celebrated uh, that triumphant entry of Jesus as he came into Jerusalem. And, and then I gave you some great challenges for the week that I'm, I'm hoping you took on and, and that you tried to apply each day of the week as you walk through Holy Week and what that looked like leading up to today. I was thinking of how amazing it was, how quickly things turned in that holy week as we talked a little bit last week. They went from cheer and exultation to uh, turning to Jesus and saying, we want you crucified in just a few days. What a turn of events. My question for today, especially after you watch that little video at the beginning is, where is your Jesus? That is my question. Now, see, I've been preparing for today for weeks, and today is a little bit of a different Sunday, as we were just sharing. We're, we're not gathered here 
as a large mass group. We're doing Easter in an entirely different format than we've ever done before. It's definitely a different time. As I gather this morning, coming to you, preaching from outside the church, you know, it's here behind me. I, I'm, I'm thinking about what it must have been like on that resurrection Sunday when Peter and John raced to the tomb. I love that video. I, I love that video because the, the guys were there. It's, it's, a, it's a depiction of them running to the tomb to see if what Mary had said was really true. And as they looked inside, their first reaction obviously was, where is Jesus? Because he was no longer inside the tomb. So this morning, as we kind of think about that, where is your Jesus? I want to share with you a few places that he is not this morning. The first response I want to share with you this morning is I want to tell you that Jesus is not on the cross. See, Scripture tells us that later Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Jesus was a disciple of uh, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jews. Now, with Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away, and he was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about seventy-five pounds, and taking Jesus's body. The two of them wrapped it with the spices and strips of linen. And this was in accordance with the Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden there was a tomb. It was a tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Now, I'll tell you that personally, I struggle a little bit when I see a crucifix. And I understand that... that for a lot of people, it is an extremely holy symbol. Um, for, for many people, many churches, and I understand that, but I still struggle with that. I struggle with that because Scripture tells us that Jesus is no longer on the cross. I just shared with you that he was taken down from the cross, and he was taken to a tomb. So I would ask you this morning the question, where is your Jesus? The second place that I will tell you about that Jesus is not is, he is not in that tomb. Scripture tells us in John chapter 20 that early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb, and she saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. And so she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one who Jesus loved. And she said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and I don't know where they have put him. Reminds you of that video that we watched at the beginning of the service. Peter and John racing there, looking inside, confirming exactly what Mary had said, that Jesus was no longer in the tomb. In John chapter 20, a little further down, it says, so that Peter and the other disciple had started for the tomb and both were running. But the other disciple outran Peter. And so he reached the tomb first. He bent over and he looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. It says, then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and he went into the tomb. He saw the strips of cloth, of linen lying there, and and he saw the burial cloth lying there as well. And he remembered that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up all by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who reached the tomb, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside, and he saw, and he believed. Again, I ask the question, where is your Jesus? The third place that I will tell you Jesus is not, is he is not dead. That's the excitement of today. That's why we gathered. That's why we're out here a little bit chilly embracing the sunshine that's coming up behind us because Jesus is not dead. As a matter of fact, Jesus showed up. He began to uh, allow himself to be seen after the resurrection. A continuation in John chapter 20 says that the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' had body had been. 
One was at the head and the other was at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? And she said, they have taken my Lord away and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned and she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Now thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go and get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her then, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead and tell my brothers, tell them that I am returning to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. And so Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them the things that he had said to her. Now, we continue to read in Scripture and see that Jesus made several more appearances um, to confirm that he is no longer dead. He even shows his nail-scarred hands and his pierced side to Thomas a little later in John chapter 20. Scripture tells us that, that now Thomas, also known as Didymus, he was one of the twelve and was not with the disciples when Jesus came and showed himself. So as the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. And though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. I always get a little tickled when I read that part because I'm thinking, that's where I always feel like Jesus has a little bit of a sense of humor. They're gathered in this room, and all of a sudden he's there. And he's like, hey, what's up? Where does he come from? He just appears. Says the doors were locked. They were hiding in secret. And here he was with this common greeting of peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, you have to take in that for a moment. Thomas didn't ask, how did Jesus know? But he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out and put your hand into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Do you believe that Jesus is alive today? I ask you the question. Where is your Jesus? There's one more place that he is not. Jesus is not here in the flesh. In Acts chapter 1, it reports as this. It says that Jesus said to them, It is not for you to know the time or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Where is your Jesus? I look at the words of an old hymn that we've sung in the church for years. It says, He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me a long life's narrow way. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. See, Jesus is no longer here with us in the flesh, but he is still here with us, and he still saves today. Scripture tells us in Romans chapter 10 that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So again, I ask you this morning, where is your Jesus? Do you still have him hanging on a cross, crucified for the world to see? Do you still see him buried in a tomb where no one else can see him? Is he dead to you? Do you believe that he's sitting at the right hand of God? Is he alive in your heart 
today? Where is your Jesus? See, in the moment that Mary and the disciples looked into the tomb, they didn't know the answer to the question. Today, we should be able to give an answer. We should know. As believers, we need to be able to respond to that question. I want to remind you of the Apostles' Creed. I want to read that to you this morning because I believe it kind of reminds us of what it is that we need to be knowing this morning. The Apostles' Creed says this. It says, I believe in God the Father, the Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and he was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, one holy church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Where is your Jesus? Can you declare today that I serve a risen Savior? Do you believe that this morning? When people see your life and they watch you, are they left asking the question, where is your Jesus? When your health is failing, where is your Jesus? When money is tight, where is your Jesus? When relationships break, where is your Jesus? When the coronavirus comes in and changes everything around you, where is your Jesus? Maybe this morning, maybe you've lost a little bit of sight of where Jesus is in your life, or maybe you're not even sure if you've ever known. In a moment, we're going to close in prayer, and I will invite you to pray with me at that time. I asked Timmy this week to record a song for us this morning that I, I really was really on my heart. And, and so we're going to share with you this morning that song. And I just want you to be able to, to sit back and, and listen and take in the words to this song with the question in your mind, where is your Jesus? So sit back, listen to these, listen to the words as Timmy shares with us in song this morning. He was pierced for our transgressions, He was crushed for our sin. The punishment that brought us peace was upon Him. By His wounds, by His wounds we are healed. Through our transgressions, He was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon Him. By His wounds, by His wounds, we are healed. We are healed for Your sacrifice in the life. That you gave. We are healed for you paid the price. By your grace, we are saved. We are saved. He was pierced for our transgression, He was cursed for our sins. The punishment that brought us was upon him by his wounds by his wounds we are healed we are healed by your sacrifice in the life that Healed for you, pay the price. 
transgressions He was crushed for our sins The punishment that brought us peace Was upon Him By His wounds By His wounds we are healed By His wounds By His wounds we are healed Maybe you needed to be reminded of where your Jesus is this morning. Scripture tells us where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Is your treasure Jesus? Is he truly your treasure? Is he alive in your heart today? Do you believe that by his wounds we are healed? Do you believe in the resurrection? Do you believe in the things I shared in the Apostles' Creed? If not, today is a great day to invite Him to come into your life, to be real. I'd love to pray with you this morning. All you need to do is just reach out to Jesus and ask Him to forgive you of your sins and fill your heart with His love. And He will do that for you. If you're interested in knowing more about this Savior and this is something totally new and you're hearing about this for the first time as we celebrate this morning. I'd ask you to reach out to us at the church. Give us a call or send us an email or a message on Facebook and let us know. And we want to gather with you and we want to walk with you through this journey. I hope you really believe that song, those words, that by his wounds we are healed. I hope you know this morning where your Jesus is. And I hope that he is alive deep within your heart. Join me as we pray this morning. Father in heaven, we thank you for this moment. God, in this very different setting than we've ever experienced before. Celebrating a, a sunrise service in a very unique fashion. Father, we're thankful this morning for your love, for the sacrifice that you made by, by sending your son into this world. We thank you that, that for Jesus, we thank you that he was willing to endure the cross for the shame of our sin. And that through that, through that death on the cross and the resurrection that we celebrate today, that we have hope, that we can have peace because of the love, because of the forgiveness because of the restitution that that represented, and that because of the resurrection, we have life today. Father, would you bless us today on this very, very special Resurrection Sunday. Father, would we feel you, your presence? Would we draw close to you? God, would you uh, just speak into our lives throughout this day? Lord, we love you and we praise you. And we just give you this day. Thank you for your son. Thank you for the cross. In your name we pray. Amen. I will say again, he is risen. <laughs> he is risen indeed. I want to remind you to join us later this morning at 1045. Tune back in. We've got a great uh, Easter Sunday message uh, scheduled for, for you guys. We've got some great worship. It's going to be a wonderful time to gather together telling the story of Resurrection Sunday. Uh, it's not too late. Reach out to your friends. Invite them to join us on our Facebook feed at 1045 or on our YouTube feed. And be with us in worship as we celebrate the risen Savior. May the Lord bless you this morning. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you at 1045. God bless. Thank you.